What's up, y'all? I don't know if it's the pre-workout, but I feel like spilling some tea. So if you want to hear how this man got the love of my life to break up with me and do it in such a disrespectful way, drop teacups in the comments. If I get 20 teacups, <laughs> I'll tell the story. When I say y'all came through, <laughs> y'all came through. So here goes the story time. Try not to judge me because honey... <laughs> y'all so <laughs> here's part one of the story time of how this man convinced the love of my life to break my heart so y'all kind of heard part of this story before remember when i told y'all i was overseas working in the desert and i was working seven days a week at least i'm gonna say 12 to be on the safe side but i want i'm confident that it was at least 14 hours a day in a hundred and something degree heat yeah this is the rest this is that story so he and I, back in the day, you know, you really couldn't FaceTime and stuff like that. Y'all about to probably figure out how old I am if you don't know already. You couldn't FaceTime. So what, what happened was as soon as I could get to a computer, I shoot him an email, which he would get to his BlackBerry. But the email would hit quick, kind of like a text message, because that's how Blackberries were back in the day. So he could respond and then it would come through on my email. But of course, I don't get it again until I check my email. So this is how he and I talked that entire time I was gone. Okay, so occasionally we got to talk on the phone, but it was very, very rare because it was like four phones to split between everybody that was there. And I was one of many. So I, I really didn't get phone time because there was always a line. And because of the hours that I worked, I either was going to have to significantly cut into my sleep or I just couldn't because I'll be at work. So the email was our saving grace. Again, I was one of many, so I didn't even get to be on the computer all the time. But if I was lucky that day, I'd get at least 30 minutes, maybe even an hour, depending on if the phones are free, then everybody run to the phones. But i get 30 minutes, maybe even an hour to just email back and forth. Again, that was the closest thing we had to a text message. So... I'm emailing him, y'all. This man is the love of my life. I had just got my heart broken by my thug. That's a whole nother story time. <laughs> and I was choosing better. I chose the square. I chose the nice guy who, again, was nice until he wasn't. And y'all, the worst part about this story is, had he not did me the way he did me that one time, I would have married that man. Like, I literally, even when I look back, because, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Even when I look back, I cannot think of anything else about him that was a deal breaker. I loved every aspect of him. He was a gamer. He was weird. He was corny, just like me. And I love that man. And had he not did such a 180, I probably would have had that man, baby, and been married to him right now. But... You know, things happen for a reason. So fast forward, I find out I'm going home. Y'all, I'm so desperate to talk to this man. At this point, I basically bargained with somebody to split their phone time with me. So I think we had like a five minute cap that we were allowed to be on the phones. Because again, it was only a few phones in rotation amongst everybody. And the person ba basically gave me two and a half out of their five minutes. And nobody could complain because they would have had to wait for them to finish the five minutes anyway. So I rush. I tell him my flight information. I'm excited, honey. I was just so happy to see my man. But what I wasn't prepared for was the mental and physical effects of transitioning back to the States. Because you got to remember, I'm gone for months. Life for my family, friends, and even my coworkers don't stop. So you got to come in. You got to try to reacclimate yourself in more ways than one. But what hit me the hardest was the physical transition. Y'all, my body was tired and weak. My lungs felt like heavy and tight because I went from breathing in a bunch of dust filled air. We had dust storms a lot and to the air in the states that i wasn't in the best area in the u.s so my lungs was just struggling and i was like oh god i feel bad mind y'all i didn't even get to settle in to do anything personal until like later on in the evening so i tell him babe i'm really not feeling well i would prefer to take you know get some rest and then i'm gonna come straight home to you like leave where i'm at and drive home to be with you for all of my off time right <laughs> honey I want to say this is really really long ago so i think i told him like hey i don't feel well it was already late and he was hours away he wasn't down the street and i was just like hey babe i really really don't feel well but i promise you all of my off time i'm gonna come home and spend with you because he's somebody from back home <laughs> i almost gave too much tea i'm gonna come home and spend that time with you i promise like i'm getting up early tomorrow and i want to come see you 
I sent this via text. I think I had Sprint at the time where you could pause your service. Again, y'all, this is way, way back in the day. So I text him this. Meanwhile, y'all, I'm like laying on the floor. I can't remember if I was on the floor, floor, or air mattress, but I'm at my homegirl's house because I gave up like everything when I left. I, gave, I was just renting an apartment, but like I gave all my stuff up to save money. Y'all, he called me. Of course, I picked up. When I tell you this man was screaming at the top of his lungs, I was all sorts of and 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 he's screaming how my homeboy told me that that's all y'all do so y'all i am flabbergasted i am vexed the love of my life talking to me like this when i just don't feel good i'm not doing nothing wrong i just don't feel good and he just keeps saying my homeboy told me how y'all do when y'all go down there all y'all do is just cheating you cheat with each other i knew you was cheating on me you 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 and i'm like what in the world? Keep in mind, y'all, I've never cheated on anyone. And I don't mean semantics where I black, where it's like, oh, we was on a break up here. I don't do it. If we on a break, I'm literally taking a break to reevaluate. I'm not messing with other people. So he's saying all these things to me. My heart is breaking. Because not my man, my man, my man talking to me like this. <laughs> but he was. So I'm just like, oh, okay. Y'all, he went so hard cussing me out that I hung up. He called me back to back, I want to say over 15 times before I got to the point where I literally had to call everybody and say, hey, I have to shut off my phone. I have some personal things going on. If you need me, you're going to have to call my homegirl's house phone. And if my homegirl's watching, I know she can attest to this. So I literally had to power down my phone. And when I powered it back on, y'all, I had voicemail after voicemail after voicemail. It, it looked like he was all, almost calling me within like a second or two of each phone call. And then when he finished filling my voicemail up, I guess, he started texting it to me. And it's all him texting me out of my name. He never wanted once said well you're saying you don't feel good what's wrong or let me come take care of you no he just instantly resorted to calling me out of my name so i was just like okay you're done to me and some more tea remember that thug i was telling y'all about that i'm i need to do another story time for he came to that location right before i left and i wouldn't even he was trying me he wanted it bad and i was like nope nope because my man my man my man I'm loyal. I should say I used to be. I used to be loyal to a fault. I used to be loyal to stupidity, which is why I'm very selective about who I mess with now because I don't play with matters of the heart and everybody ain't mess withable. So this homeboy that warned him about me, keep in mind, y'all, this was the homie homie. This ain't somebody that, oh, I'm an acquaintance. They was like brothers from another mother. Shot his shot, I want to say, not even two weeks after we broke up. And me being messy because now I'm ready to throw it in my ex face. I didn't though. I said, aren't you such and such homeboy? Like y'all like brothers. You know what this man said to me? He's like, yeah, we cool. But he wouldn't know what to do with that anyway. And when I say that y'all, I'm talking about asking me to take me out and everything. So you let this man convince you that I was stepping out on you. And he literally was just trying to move you out of the way. Like a pawn. Great job, dum dum skillet. Even if the friend just wanted the cat, he pursued me consistently. It wasn't just one message and he was done. He didn't have my contact info, but he did have my, when I say contact, he didn't have like my phone number and stuff like that. But he did have my social media at the time. And he was messaging me and I just was like, wow. And I don't know if my ex ever put two and two together, but I ended up blocking my ex on all social media. And yeah, that was that. Like, I'm guessing his homeboy thought he was smarter than both of us. He's clearly smarter than my ex, but he wasn't smarter than me. Like, you really thought you was going to break up my relationship and then I was going to come mess with you? <laughs> like, how dumb can you be? And like I said, y'all, this him messaging me trying to connect went on for an extended period of time. So even if he was just working for the cat, he put in a lot of work. But I was sitting there looking at him every time I read his message, disgusted. I was thinking about blasting him, but then I thought how much it would hurt my ex. So I didn't. So I'm watching the playback because I'm editing the video and y'all are probably thinking because I would be too. Well, why didn't you block the homeboy too? Keep in mind, this is young Hurt Tay. 
and my ex is calling me anything derogatory that you could call a woman like i'm talking about he using the suburban terms he using the hood terms like anything he could call me to degrade me he was so this was my one up on him like i would have never and didn't i would never sleep with his homeboy to get back at him and i didn't blast the two of them so this was my at the time, Young Tay's like, I know something you don't know and I'm not gonna tell. You calling me all of these things and meanwhile, your boy is in here. He ready to eat the box, take me to dinner. You big dummy.